What's up, guys? I'm going to talk about crypto news today. This is Crypto with James. Um, and in particular, one piece of news about Voyager that's from a couple of weeks ago, but went fairly under the radar, and it's an intriguing one to me. Um, before I get into that, as always, I update the spreadsheet. These are the first 26 coins I spoke about on the channel that I thought would smash it in this bull circle. Had you invested 100 bucks to each one when I released the videos, and you were still holding those bags, you would have a profit of 70,300 bucks. Add in the 2,600 you invested, and you'd be sitting on 72,900. I've held them all, and I've closed positions on them all, and I've reinvested into new cryptos. If you want to see what I'm in, you can check out Copper My Crypto, where I share my life portfolio, one that's been outperforming the market week in, week out. My holdings, and my biggest holdings, are primed, primed for some explosive gains. Um, I've had some massive wins recently, uh, so if you want to be a part of that, you can check it out. The biggest thing I keep reiterating is, God damn, guys, bank your profits. There are so many new people in this market that think it's going to go on forever um, because it's just relentless optimism. Um, and, you know, when the crash happens, it happens and it happens hard and fast. Uh, within a couple of weeks of the top of the market, it, you know, most coins, particularly alts, will have retraced 70% or so. Bank profits along the way sleep amazingly well. Um, and then when the bear cycle hits, stay in the market. Build your investments across a couple of years. It's a brilliant opportunity. You can make investments that will change your life. Case in point, I found Phantom in the bear cycle. That's up 432 times in value from when I found it. And when the bear cycle kicks in, I'll be looking for those coins. I'll be finding those coins and I'll be sharing those coins with the Copy My Crypto members. So again, if you want to be a part of it, you can check it out. Um, right, so Voyager. Voyager's on a bit of a run today. Um, I think that's pretty much off of um, one of the YouTubers uh, uh, talking about Voyager's potential uh, last yesterday evening. Um, but more than that, to be honest, Voy because Voyager's been around for a, a, a while, it's actually rebranded from something else. Um, I can't remember what it was, BQX, but I can't remember for the life of me what the coin was called. Because uh, they changed name like twice as well. I swear they went by Ethos for a while uh, and something else. But anyway, team have been making uh, good strides. Obviously, Voyager, uh, one thing I like about Voyager in general is it pretty much, there you go, Ethos, yeah, um, is it provides. Um, new people to the market with an easy way of investment. It was uh, Voyager actually set this up um, last year, really, this got this actually started. Um, and it was that was actually a big reason I loved crypto.com. I thought that was that removed a lot of um, difficulties for pe new people in the market. So Voyager does the same thing, right? Good percentage returns on uh, staking and interest as well. But the piece of news that really intrigues me actually is this um and it came out on november in like midway through last month so voyager makes an investment in particle a new way to own collect and experience fine art through nfts this is a concept sounds quite intriguing so it's powered by avalanche particle is building a uh, platform that enables anyone to own some of the world's greatest masterpieces by collectively participating in the art market so founders include uh, Louis Guza, I'm not going to say these names right, former chairman of uh, Christie's post-war and contemporary art, Shingo Levine and Adam Levine, co-founders of Ethos.io, Philip Eaton, Eaton uh, which is co-founder and chairman of Voyager, and Oscar Salazar, uh, founding CTO and chief architect of Uber and advisor to Voyager. So Voyager's um, looking at it, effectively endeavoring into the NFT space. Now, you know, every, everyone's going to at some point. Particle itself sounds really intriguing. Particle divides each piece of art into 10,000 unique NFTs or particles, each with its own title deed stored on the blockchain. Once a buyer purchases a particle, they receive a digital certificate or collector's card representing its owner's specific ownership in the artwork. Purchasers have the right to buy and sell their particles on secondary markets, trade or transfer them to anyone they wish. Particle purchasers will also have the opportunity to view the artwork whenever and wherever it is displayed and enjoy the right to call the artwork partly theirs. It's an intriguing premise, the idea that you could effectively 
split, say, the Mona Lisa into 10,000. I mean, Mona Lisa's tiny, but <laughs> splitting, a, splitting a piece of artwork effectively into um, 10,000 pieces and owning a share, like owning a part of it. Um, and I suppose as, as you, if this was a foray you were going to do, if you could own multiple pieces of one said piece of artwork and that artwork is, you know, goes up in value in the markets. If you've owned multiple pieces, obviously you had those multiple pieces go up. It's just an intriguing premise. Um, <clears throat> but the, yeah, Voyager invested 50 million um, into the seed fund rounding of particle. Um, and it's not anything I've heard about before. Like I've not heard of a, of this kind of project where they're effectively, you know, try splitting a piece of art into that many pieces. It's just, it's just truly an intriguing premise. Um, but yeah, boy, you're making moves. Boy, you're making moves. Um, yeah. And that was that was the boy the little bit of Voyager news. I don't I just I don't I think went under the radar. Maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't see anything about it online really at all. So um in other news, Meta uh Facebook Meta's uh head of crypto is stepping down at the end of the year. Um he said while there is still so much to do right on the heels of launching Novi, and I remain as passionate as ever about the need for a change in our financial, our payments and financial systems. My entrepreneurial DNA has been nudging me for too many mornings in a row to continue ignoring it. So he's leaving um, to to effectively start doing something else. Um, he's joined a list of former execs of the social media giant who have left the firm in the past 12 months including uh, fellow DMs, co-founders Morgan Bello and Kevin Wheel, um, who took up roles at NFX and Planet, respectively. Um, yeah. yeah, so we'll see what happens with that, because obviously what we're going to um, see is obviously Facebook jumping into crypto. There's no doubt about that. Stefan uh, Castriel, the former CEO of uh, Upwork, is now taking over um, the crypto and fintech unit Novi, which is obviously part of Meta. So um, we'll see how that evolves over time. Obviously, Facebook will once they jump in hard. It will be interesting to see how uh, those more well how it affects markets and what happens from there. Um, the Premier League, if you're not English, you might not even know what the Premier League is, although you should, but Premier League is the biggest football, like biggest division of in football in the world. Um, it's said to be considering a partnership with a cryptocurrency platform that provides NFTs, according to the Times. Minutes of the meeting, recent meeting between the Premier League and fan representatives revealed that the league is considering getting involved in NFTs, with sources saying the league's approach will be slow and cautious. And different from the fan engagement model provided by a platform such as Socios. Uh, that surprises me because I really did think um, that Socios would be perfect. Because um, we've already got a few Premier League teams. We've got Manu, we've got Arsenal, uh, Leeds, I think Villa, Aston Villa as well. Um, as it says, several Premier Leagues have launched tokens on the Socios platform, which uh, fans can purchase to receive prizes, access special experiences or vote on minor club decisions. Uh, the Premier League may instead be looking to follow in the footsteps of La Liga, which partnered with French digital soccer collectibles platform So Rare in September to offer NFTs of all players in the league for fans to trade and play in fantasy tournaments. I've spoken about So Rare. Uh, and I have actually had a little play around with it, but I'm not the biggest fan of um, of it, to be honest. I tried, I tried playing around with it. wasn't. I didn't. After after about a month of playing around with it, I was like, I can't be bothered with this anymore. But to be fair, I, I struggle with consistency on on, on um, fantasy football anyway, so I struggle with so rare as well. Um, but again, I mean, this whoever they end up landing with, it's going to be big news because this is the biggest print, the biggest league in the world for football. Um, so this is one to, space to keep an eye on because. If they end up landing with a particular cryptocurrency or a particular
particular platform which is fueled by a particular current cryptocurrency i would expect that crypto to move up very strongly in price uh but the fact that they've got a slow and cautious approach i wouldn't expect to see anything this before you know probably the end of the season to be honest um last piece of news when um so true or false 91 percent of surveys about bitcoin and crypto are totally wrong um so tony richards is the head of payment policy at the and um, at the reserve bank of australia uh he read the recent results from finders crypto report saying that almost one in five australians owned crypto he didn't believe it for a second however the results had already been widely published around the country gracing headlines for weeks um even making it into the recent senate committee on australia um the finder survey claimed uh well, the finder survey from August claimed that 17% of Australians own at least one crypto, 9% own Bitcoin, 8% own Ethereum, and 5% own Doge. Um, is the figure pl plausible? The Reserve um, Bank of Australia's head of po payment policy said no doubt fueled by influencers and, ce and celebrity tweets. I mean, the fact that Doge is owned by five, accordingly, 5% apparently, um, you know, Obviously, Elon, that might have just been for off the back of Elon Musk tweets um, in large part. And to be fair, you know, Dogecoin rallied like mad. You know, you can't ignore that. People probably wanted to try and make some profits. Um, the head of consumer research at Finder defended the methodology. Respondents are selected based on age, gender and location to create a sample which fairly reflects the results that we'd expect from a full national survey. Um, and that's what you would want, to be fair. You wouldn't want random sampling. You would want um, the sampling to be based on the proportionality of the of the populace. So, you know, make sure that it's reflective of gender, race, age groups. Um, but yeah, different surveys have about two million uh, estimates, two million apart. You know, we've. Uh, YouGov survey commissioned by Australian crypto exchange Swift found that the number of Australians who hold crypto is closer to 25%. Um, so again, yeah, it, I mean, it's all, it depends on, it has to depend on the sampling methods, to be fair. Um, and you also have to have a larger sample, like, if your sample is based on hypothetically like a thousand people, that's not reflective of a population of 25.69 million. Um, exactly. The July survey collected results from 2,768 people. You cannot state that this, that 2,768 people is representative of 25.69 million. You just can't. You just can't. It's that simple. That's not even 0.1% of the populace. That's 0.01% of the populace. Um, and you've got to bear that in mind. Like, when I, I talk about the surveys, and I like, list, like looking at the surveys to see what the transition is, but fundamentally, right, methodology behind sampling is vital because that is not reflective. You can't draw conclusions from your sample to your population. You just can't. And that's my maths ran over. Um, anyway, that's it for me. Hope you're all keeping well. Um, if you need to crypto, check out a couple of my crypto. Or if you've been here a while, you can check it out. It's where I share my portfolio. My portfolio keeps up from the market. We've had some massive recent wins. Uh, but bigger than that, guys, and more importantly than that, I want to just reiterate this market, this bull cycle doesn't last forever. And when the correction comes and the bear cycle kicks in, it will be brutal. So bank your profits along the way. And then in the bear cycle, stay in the goddamn market. The market will be undervalued. Everything's on discount. You've got a couple of years to build positions in coins that you have faith in, that you believe can run well. It's a great opportunity. All I do during the bear cycle is find those coins that are hugely undervalued and stagger my investments across, like dollar cost average in, but stagger my investments across a couple of years, and there's opportunities for life-changing gains. Case in point, it's Phantom, like I said, 432 times up in value, $1,000, you'd have 432 grand. That's a house. That's a mortgage done. 
with a ton of money spare. And there are great opportunities in the bear cycle because the bull cycle is coming to an end. We've not got that long left. So, yeah, check it out anyway. Uh, <laughs> right, take care, guys. Bye.